What's up gamers? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get this amazing, this really cool mystic set. Like, look how cool it is. And we're going to be going over a bunch of techniques for caves, as well as talking about everything in regards to the secret shop that gives us this armor. Let's get into it. To begin or start this quest, you're going to have to make your way all the way up here to the Woodland Stable. So this is going to be pretty much to the northeast of Lookout Landing. So when you arrive at Woodland Stable, it should look like this. If you're on a new game, pretty much this is what it looks like. There is a shrine close by it's located right over there on that hill so if you want to fast point to the stable please go ahead and get that shrine otherwise we're gonna notice something very interesting in this area it's gonna be this balloon over here now something else that i want you to pay attention to is that there is going to be a little bloopy over here and bloopies usually lead us to big secrets and you want to do some damage usually on a bloopy because they drop things known as rupees and uh shooting them can make you very rich now bloopies usually in this game are always going to lead you to a cave or something is secret is happening now, when you see one, it's usually going to run and then disappear. But in this case, this bloopy is leading us all the way over here to these guys, to this balloon. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to see the first person here and talk to them. And they're going to mention that I hope he's okay. And in this cave is going to emerge the brother of this guy out here. And his brother's inside searching for something very, very special in the cave. And this is Colton. And basically what Colton wants to do is eat a bunch of something in order to completely transform. And your goal in this game is pretty much to collect these things known as booboo gems. This is exactly the hunt for it. Now, if you don't have a booboo gem on you, this is what essentially what you're going to have to do. That, like I mentioned before, that bloopy leads you to a cave. And that cave was going to be over here. And what you essentially want to do is hop into whatever cave you want. Now, example, as you discover a cave and you open up your mini map, especially on a new game, it's going to show up just being blank saying Pico Pond Cave. Now, as we continue to go into this cave, we're going to notice and look around for something known as a Booble Frog. So as soon as you spot one, all you gotta do is get a nice little headshot on this guy. He's gonna drop down the Booble Frog and the Booble Frog is going to pop. Oh, oh, we're, we're a little weak here. Okay, that, that, that should do it. We're out of arrows. I did it. Oh my gosh. No worries. No worries. <laughs> there we go. The spear work. Okay, and when you knock out that frog, then the gem is going to drop. This is the booboo gem. After you get that, you're going to return out of here. Also, something else I just want to point out that you're going to notice is that there's a check mark now on your cave. This indicates not that you found treasure in the cave, but that you've taken out these frogs. And this is all actually connected to this quest line from these guys over here. Anyway, after you have a booboo gem, you're going to go ahead and talk to him. And you're going to ask him what his dream is. And he wants all these gems. And he basically wants to eat it. So just give him your booboo gem. And when he has it, he's going to freak out. And he's like, yeah, this is the real thing. And then he's going to hand you a reward for getting him booboo gems. Essentially, what's going to happen the entire game is booboo gems to this guy equals getting rewards. And the first one you get is the Bokoblin mask. And Bokoblin's mask, when you wear it, allows you to walk around Bokoblins without them even noticing you. The only time that these Bokoblins will attack you is when you hit them. So continue talking to Colton and Colton's going to pretty much eat this thing. And then pretty much after this entire dialogue, they're both going to bounce out of here and it's going to be where these brothers are heading off to Tarrytown. All right, so from Woodland Stable, you're gonna wanna make your way all the way to the east. And if you wanna follow a road, it's pretty much gonna be up this road, up this spot, and then pretty much you're gonna be able to go to Tarrytown right over here. This is where Tarrytown is, right on the map. Once you arrive at Tarrytown, you're going to be seeing someone very familiar that we just saw as you walk in directly from the town gate and walk to the right side. Right in front of us is going to be our buddy, Kilton. There's Kilton welcoming you. Kilton basically talks about his brother, Colton, who is going to be located all the way across over there. And the important thing to note is you will never be able to see this balloon during the daytime. This balloon is going to be very specific to nighttime and you'll find it in other various locations. But the one where his brother, Kilton, showed Colton is going to be the best spot. So pretty much you've already learned that you can get a Bokoblin mask from here. And the best part is we're going to be getting a lot of goodies. So what you want to do is go ahead and teleport over to the Skyview Tower that is right by Colton. So once you arrive at the Skyview Tower, you're going to walk towards the left as you come out the tower. And then you're going to see the balloon. Go ahead and then head over to that balloon spot and get ready for the excitement of what you can possibly get next from the shop. As you approach him, he says that he'll trade his 
his treasure for bubble gems. And he's gonna really say that he needs a lot more. Then he incentivizes you to go and collect more booboo gems by showing you the mystic set right above you. And it's like, okay, I need to finish up these caves right now. Before we move on with the rewards, let me show you three techniques that'll make your cave hunting very, very easy in order to get these frogs and the gems you need for Colton. First, as we mentioned at the start of this quest, bloopies, the little blue bunnies, will be very important when leading you into caves. When you see one, go ahead and shoot it with some arrows to get some quick rupees. You're gonna notice that bloopies run into a direction and disappear. At that point, you wanna look around the entire area to see where it disappeared, and eventually that is going to lead you towards a cave. The second technique is going to be very important, and you are not going to need bloopies to guide you with this one. When you're able to go inside a cave, have the camera available and take a picture of this frog the moment you see it. If you upgrade your Pura pad, and if you don't know how to do that, I do have a whole video on my channel for that, you'll be able to target the frog specifically and set your sensor so that you can activate it and your Pura pad will notify you when you are very close to one. This is going to be very useful when you're inside of a cave, especially since a lot of these frogs are going to be hidden behind certain walls or sometimes they're going to be above you and your poor pad's going to say exactly where to go. Believe it or not, this also works when you're even outside of caves and will ping you when you are trying to get these frogs. And technique number three, this one is going to involve a tree, but not just any tree. It's going to involve a cherry blossom tree. Essentially, there are very few of these in the game. And when you do spot them, you want to make sure that you walk up to it and take any fruit that you have in your inventory. And if you do pay attention by the base of the tree, you're going to be seeing an offering spot there. Go ahead and pick the fruit up and drop it in into that. As soon as you drop your fruit into it, you will have a cutscene showing a very familiar creature for those who have played Breath of the Wild, and it'll show a bunch of beams of lights in the area. By the way, fun fact, you can keep dropping the fruit over and over again, and the cutscene will just replay even though the lights are there. So just, just be aware of that. These beams of light don't show completed caves, but they actually show all the caves within that area, so you can go ahead and check those beams of light. Now, there are a total of eight cherry blossom trees on your map. The first one is going to be located pretty much in in Hyrule Field all the way to the northeast part of Lookout Landing. This is what it's going to look like when it is activated and you're going to see all these caves lit up within the area. This is the starting place and it's the best spot to get the initial caves at the start of the game. This cherry blossom tree is located in the Elden area. So you're going to want to go over here. This is by Death Mountain and this is what all the beams of light look like. I was kind of shocked when I saw this many in the area. So here it is. Looks nice. The next one that we're going to be going to is that's going to be located right by Zora's Domain. So you have Zora's Domain and then you have this spot. When you activate the lights from this cherry blossom tree, it's going to show all the caves that are on the mountain inside in the water area and there are quite a bit that do show up here and sometimes they have multiple entrances so keep that in mind when you're looking at some of the caves here the next one is going to be located all the way on ebon mountain over here this is what the cherry blossom tree looks like when you're looking at it and what it looks like when you have all the lights activated showing off the caves over there this next cherry blossom tree is going to be located all the way in farin area and when you're in the farin area this is what the cherry blossom tree will look like and you're going to notice quite a bit hidden amongst the trees on the floor and pretty much deep within the area and some of these caves here are actually really really big uh, <laughs> so be prepared for that when you enter the caves in this area this next cherry blossom tree is going to be really easy. It's going to be right next to Gerudo Canyon Skyview Tower. As soon as you go out of this cave, you're going to notice it's going to be right below. So hop off this cliff, fly below, and it's going to be right there. One of the most convenient ones. And when you activate it, this is what it's going to look like. And all the light beams will show up in this area. This one is located on the top of Satori Mountain. When you're here, this is what all the light beams will look like when you're standing on top of it. The final cave that we'll be talking about is right to the west of Rito Village. This one is going to be in the colder areas so just be prepared for that so activate this cherry blossom tree and you can see all the beams of light in this area so use all these cherry blossom trees to your advantage to quickly hit a lot of caves that way you can farm yourself up gems very fast so that way we can redeem it at the armor shop now that you've gotten yourself a lot of, of bubbles boobles gems whatever you want to call them we're gonna go ahead and see what rewards we get so go ahead and make your way back to the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower. That way we can go ahead and exchange our gems back with Colton. So you already spent one gem to get the Bokoblin Mask. Well, the next thing, a Moblin Mask will cost you two gems. And a Moblin Mask is going to be protecting you from Moblins unless you initiate combat with them. Next up, a Hynix Toenail will cost you two gems after that. Then, at three more gems, you'll be able to get a Mystic Robe. If you notice, whatever he's going to give you is going to be on the left side. After the Mystic Robe, 
put, that puts us at a total of eight gems to get the mystic robes. So going into eight caves and hunting down eight frogs is going to be able to get you the robe. After this, three gems will get you eight fire keys eyeballs, which you can use on your arrows. Another three gems will get you a Lizalfos mask, and that'll protect you from Lizalfos when you encounter them, and they will not go after you. Three gems after that will get you five ice breath Lizalfos tails, and after that, you're going to need four more gems, but you're going to be getting the mystic trousers, which is the second piece of armor for this. That means you're going to need a total of 21 gems to get the top and the bottom of this outfit. Four gems after that will get you the white maned lino mace horn, which is going to be very useful for fusing onto a weapon so you can do a lot of damage. Another four gems after that will get you the horblin mask, which is one of my favorite ones out of all the masks because the monsters literally will drop down from the top of the ceiling just to follow you around and hang out with you. Seriously, it's it's one of my favorite ones. The gliok wing is another four gems. Then comes the lino mask, which will be another four gems. This one is just going to let you hang out with lynels until you attack them. Next up is the gliok thunderhorn, which is going to cost another four gems. Finally, at five gems after that, they're finally going to be able to get your mystic headpiece, which will complete the entire set for you. That means you need a total of 46 gems to reach this point. So if you don't want to waste your time getting one reward after the other, just go ahead and knock out 46 caves and get 46 gems, then come over here and go trade up to this. Now, you're not done, actually, because there's a total of 146 caves. And in order to find out what you get, you're going to have to do it. But I'm going to save you the trouble and let you know that it's just going to be a paraglider. Uh, so you can go ahead and waste your time doing this for the paraglider to flex on everyone. Uh, I'm also going to be wasting my time to flex on everyone with the paraglider. So don't worry about that. Now, let me tell you about the benefit of this armor. When you get hit with it, you actually don't lose hearts, but you lose rupees instead. And this is going to happen until you're bankrupt. So depending on how you think of this, this could either be a really bad thing or a good thing. But this is definitely the most stylish armor in the game. Now you know how to get the mystic set, but you should check out this video over here. Seriously, click on it.